Gormagalaski on court, I certainly addressed the amendments, but I do want to address some of the points that, that have been raised as well. And I think we've had quite a detailed debate uh, right the way through. Uh, Deputy Stephen Matthews, the chairperson of the JOC, actually very clearly outlined the long process that the, uh, the committee has gone through to get to this stage, and I thank all members of that committee for it. In relation to Jackie, Deputy Jackie Cahill's point, and I just want to put this in the record of the House because he, he's been good enough to raise it, the acquisition, affordability is an issue across the country. It's not just an issue that's an urban issue. It's acute across the country, and we want to address it across the country. In the last month, uh, Deputy Cahill, I instructed all of our local authorities to get out and acquire land banks because we need to build uh, more homes, more social, more affordable homes, and we need our councils to the forefront of it. And that's why we've asked them to acquire land, not just for the provision of social, but for the provision of affordable. And I've changed the process to reimburse the local authorities at a much earlier stage and to get them back out, particularly local authorities who have a, a diminished land bank. So I want to assure you that's the case. And I want to say as well, to move to the amendments now, because this is where it's important about how we deliver affordable housing. And when we look at the last number of weeks in the, in the legislation that we're currently bringing through, this bill and the Land Development Agency bill, it has been very clear and surprised me to some degree that um, some of our most vocal critics and uh, commentators uh, in relation to provision of housing have actually said that we want a state land development agency that doesn't build homes. And we, I'm going to put this, there's a context to this last count quarter, and it will become very clear momentarily, okay? And I, it, well, it is because I'm going to tell you what these amendments would actually do. Because uh, in real terms, what they do is exactly what uh, Deputy uh, McGrath said and ex is exactly what uh, Deputy Matthews would say. And I'll explain to deputies by reading the provision of the bill. But put this in the context. The Land Development Agency itself, uh, most of my colleagues opposite uh, Deputy O'Brien and others don't want the, our state development agency to build any homes and they don't want it to plan to build any homes, which I think is remarkable. Secondly, then we get to a stage here with these amendments, I'll ask Keon Corla, and I'd ask uh, members to look at the specific provisions of uh, the bill that is referred to in this groupings of amendments. And whilst Deputy Boyd Barrett and others may be very well-meaning and do like to say on a regular basis, um, I do like to say on a regular basis that no, this is not about excluding the small builder, the one or two man or person builder or anyone else. Let me tell you how it does, okay? Um, in the provision itself, uh, which is uh, section 6.1, it says a housing authority may make dwellings available for the purpose of sale to eligible applicants under affordable dwelling purchase arrangements and may, in accordance with the Housing Acts and regulation made under those Acts, and this is important, acquire, build, or cause to be built, or otherwise provide or facilitate the provision of dwellings for that purpose. And following subsection 1, it says enter into arrangements with and there's only four, so this is important that people are aware of this now. I might give them an opportunity to withdraw their, their amendments. Arrangements with an approved housing body, that's A. B, arrangements with cooperatives, community housing trusts, and other not-for-profit bodies. C, arrangements with the aforementioned Land Development Agency, I'll ask Cora, and that's why I specifically reference, and that's why it's relevant to what I'm saying here. And D, public-private partnership arrangements. They're the four. Okay, so if you delete D, Deputy Boyd Barris, Deputy O'Brien, Deputy O'Callaghan, and those who propose and, uh, for that to happen, where does the small private builder fit in? Okay, does the small private builder uh, build 8,000 homes in Clonborough, Deputy O'Brien? Does the small private builder build 1,000 homes in Kilcarbury? Um, and it would mean, which is consistent with the approach that both Sock Dems and Sinn Féin and PPP and others have taken, uh, that arrangements like uh, Ballamastone, Stone, where there's 1,200 homes, which is a joint venture, 238 social, 238 affordable, and 150 cost rental, would actually not be permitted under this affordable housing legislation, should your amendment actually pass. And I'm sure that's not what you want. Well, maybe it is what, what you want to happen. That effectively what you're saying is that it is local authorities, local authorities only, that no joint venture of any description 
could be entered into. So not only are deputies opposite satisfied that their colleagues in the local authorities continue to object and vote against the provision of social and affordable housing, but now they're saying they want to underpin that by changing the primary legislation here in the Dáil. That's not something I or my colleagues in government can countenance, because what you're doing, and members have said this correctly, those who have said is we do not want a situation whereby the provision of affordable homes is in any way, shape or form inhibited. And look, shake your head all you like, Deputy Boybar, you tell me if you remove D, you come back and you tell me how, how that's going to impact on the provision of affordable homes. So just to say, uh, I'll ask Karen Corla, and I've been very brief in all my contributions heretofore, but it's important because this is fundamental because what will be said by some opposite is that well, we're not against building, we're not about against the provision of affordable homes, but we just want to do it ourselves and we don't need any type of uh, private interaction, investment, private builders or anything else. We can have a land development agency that doesn't build any homes and we can have an affordable housing scheme that doesn't access any type of, of private joint venture whatsoever. So clearly the effect of these amendments would be and by removing the definition of public-private partnership arrangements from section 4 and definitions but section 12 also seeks to remove it uh, from section 6 which is provisions of dwellings by housing authorities and amendment 24 seeks to remove it from section D direct sales agreements. The effect would be to prevent housing authorities from entering into public-private partnerships or joint venture arrangements for the provision of affordable dwellings for sale. That's exactly what it would do, exactly what it would do. And section six provides that in order to make dwellings available for the purpose of sale to eligible ap applicants under affordable dwelling purchase arrangements, a housing authority may, and I quote, acquire, build, or cause to be built, or otherwise provide or facilitate the provision of dwellings for that purchase. Section 6, subsection 2, which I did refer to earlier in the context of community-led housing associations, housing trusts, etc., specifically lists arrangements that a housing authority may enter into an affordable dwellings available for sale with AHBs, the Land Development Agency, which, by the way, some who haven't sought to remove it from this don't want them building anything, arrangements with housing trusts, and yes, public-private partnerships. Um, the thrust of this section is to allow housing authorities to do whatever they can to provide affordable, affordable dwellings for sale under the affordable dwelling purchase arrangements set out in this part of the bill. That's what it wants to do. And I've said previously many times, I want our housing authorities to have the maximum tools available at their disposal in the provision of affordable dwellings. And I think every member should. Of course we want to safeguard value for money and of course any type of joint venture arrangement that comes forward is assessed in great detail by the way, not just by the local authorities who some members opposite profess to have immense confidence in but don't have uh, confidence in them to assess a public-private partnership or a joint venture apparently and also the Department of, uh, of Housing uh, uh, as well. So there are a number of checks and balances within the system but this is about delivery. This is about delivery and delivering affordable homes uh, as speedily uh, as we can, underpinned by the most comprehensive piece of affordable legislation that's there. And Deputy Matthew McGrath, Deputy Michael Fitzmaurice, and indeed others who have spoken, Deputy Stephen Matthews, Lahart, and others, and Deputy Duffy are correct in what they're saying. Because the effect of this um, deletion of one of the four mechanisms of being able to deliver and sell uh, affordable homes would be a complete deletion of that. So I, w I would maybe, you know, ask how, uh, don't really, in one respect it doesn't really matter because we know what the effect would be. And the effect would be to effectively ban all joint ventures. That's what it would be. And if, if members opposite are happy with that, that's fine and they're entitled to their position. But then they're not entitled to, to say that they support affordable housing delivery if they're going to actually remove one uh, specific uh, avenue of delivering those homes expeditiously. Like the many uh, uh, schemes that we know have been opposed at local authority level. Uh, so I use again 
uh, the, I won't use again, but there have been examples already have been tabled of thousands of homes that have been opposed at local authority level. Now what's been sought here by some members of the opposition in Sinn Féin Social Democrats and PBP is to actually copper fasten that further by removing a whole stream of delivery of affordable housing. And I think that's unconscionable. It's something that I absolutely will not support. And I do not want to remove the facility for them to enter into joint ventures for this purpose. I don't propose to accept the amendments. And I really think, actually, that the members who propose it should be honest in that, do they understand the impact of what this would be? Uh, do they, so that is, that is the question. Maybe they don't. But I won't be accepting the amendment.